All right, guys. I'm just going to do a little bit of a bit more in depth with the trading. Um, going to try and keep it simple as I don't know everybody's level and I don't want to try and push people to the point where they say it's too complicated. I'd rather just keep it simple to begin with. So what we've got here is what is called coin market cap where you'll find the majority of cryptos. Now I'd say the majority because you have to have enough trading volume to actually be listed on here and obviously if you're an ICO you haven't begun trading either. So what you have here is what's called the market cap, which is the combination, this is the value of all the cryptos in here, all these numbers added up to give the full valuation of the market cap. As you can see, uh, Bitcoin still holds quite a large valuation on the market. As such, it causes fluctuations throughout the crypto market when it moves up or down. It, this is why the market's gone in red, it's dropped 4% nearly, and you find a lot of the market will follow it. As you can see here, they look very similar for a lot of the those affected. Um, that's the first thing. And how do you get the market cap? Well, if we take this number here, this comes from the current market price multiplying the circulating supply. So this is the number of coins or tokens, depending on what it is, multiplied by the market price. So that creates the market valuation, which often is not a true figure. Because let's face it, if somebody started selling uh, Bitcoin heavily, that valuation would drop considerably, which means that price against that would not be accurate because people would pay less for it. As such, all these token uh, coins are not valued at that price because any dump in the market would actually reduce the price of it. So there's a lot of things that aren't taken into account. So you've got to bear that in mind when you're looking at market pricing. Okay, so let's go into one of these cryptos. The first thing I want to say is there's a lot of them on here. As you can see here, there's t this is the top 100. And I think we'll go with VE Chain because VE Chain is quite an interesting project. It's out of China. Um, I won't talk about it too much because it's, it's one I'm invested in. I started in this at about $2.70. And as you can see, it's currently at $5.15. I'm, I'm expecting some growth on this. This is its trading history. As you can see from the 4th of September to now. The markets it's traded on. All the different markets. When you're looking at markets, what you're looking for is this volume trading. If it's got no trading volume, it means nobody's buying or selling. So like here, you've got Cryptos, that's VAT, which is the VA chain Thor, um, converted to BTC, which is Bitcoin, or VA chain Thor converted to Ethereum has zero trades. Nobody's buying it. It's got a valuation of $6.27, but obviously there's no trading, so it doesn't really matter. This one here actually tells you where most of the trading is actually going on. L Bank is where the majority is going on. Binance is a exchange that I use quite a lot. And as you can see, that's this secondary one here. Where it's sitting at $4.94 there. I'd assume L Bank must be out of Korea then, I suppose. There's a lot of new exchanges opening up. I haven't come across L Bank before. Been a bit nosy. In fact, I'll leave that alone. That's for me to look at later. So these are the different exchanges. You can click on them and get information. You can see what they trade, etc. Um, and the whole point of this is like when we're looking at VE chain, it's something we're interested in. We check the social aspect. What you look for in here, because I'm, I'm, one of the things I want to stress here is I'm actually showing you sort of things I look for when I'm trading is you've got here a meetup. Now, depending on how big the meetup is, if it's a launch or something, it can cause a run-up, financial run-up. The other thing here, you can see the public beta test is approaching. So you've got beta testing of the platform, which is added value, which is why we're seeing over here the price increase because it's in beta testing. Back to social. Then you see it has a partnership. I'm very excited that VE Chain official is part of Mobi. Can't wait to share our experience in blockchain and internet of things to develop an ecosystem with mobility and more affordable. 
Uh, PwC HQ is now in its discussion with VA Chain to provide trust based services on the VA Chain platform. These are positive news f- threads that could see the price significantly move once something is solid. One thing I do like is platforms, and anybody who follows me actually knows I'm into platforms in a big way because it means that you have the ability to pivot and do other things if you've got other things developing on your blockchain. Um, in this case, this partnership is an interesting one, but more importantly, the most important bit for me is the beta testing because it's actually becoming a real project. So we if we take those bits of information, this is where you sort of start to build a picture. Is it something to invest in? Now, we'll come out of this for now. As I said, the market's down anyway, so don't worry about this. This is normal for a Sunday. But if we go over here, you can see I've drawn a couple of graphs. Uh, sorry, a couple of lines on this, and this is called um, cycle trading. This is a cycle. When you see it going up and down, you're trading within this cycle between these. As, as you can see, it's a bit of a wedge, um, but I'm not going to get into wedges at the minute. Um, but the point is you're looking at the, the peaks and the troughs, and you're trying to see if there's a pattern in this to see when to invest and when to pull out. And this is where you can do day trading, swing trading. Um, And I also do another metrics, which you may actually see on this because they've changed the way the screen looks. Market history, where are you? Order books. Ah, there you are, hiding at the top there. So I've got this magic mouse on the Mac, absolutely hate it. Moves things. So there you've got the 24-hour high and 24-hour low. So at its peak, it's been 0.0, all those, 214 of a Bitcoin. 24-hour low has been 186. So you can see there's a slight move and nothing, nothing to write home about. This, for me, isn't enough to actually be bothered to swing trade, but I just wanted to fill you in with some of the information that I look at. This, when it's at the top, it's called a peak. At the bottom, it's called a trough. This line at the bottom is called the support because this is where it finds support to go back up again. So that's called the support line. The one at the top is actually called the resistance line. This is where it hits resistance and doesn't go any further. It drops down again. So if you can get a pattern of, see like that one's slightly off. It should actually be touching that. So you can see a resistance pattern existing across there going onwards but the point being is you can see it's in an upward trend anyway and this is one of the important things i do look at as well is if i'm investing in these i look for things that i believe in i think have value are capable of delivery and quite simply you can day trade your money up so for example um like i said this one's a bit small to trade But if we did the same with NEO, NEO is probably a better one to look at. The reason I say NEO, because if we look at NEO, let's go out of this for a minute. I I haven't got any NEO actually. Uh, Let's just look for NEO. I just want the trading history of NEO. That's okay. So let's have a look at the NEO graph. As you can see, it's been pretty volatile. But look at the 24-hour high. It's at 85, and it's low. Is it just over $80? Now, NEO will hover around $80 to $90. It'll go up and down. There's a bit of volatility in it right now. As you can see there, there's a bit of a spike, and it's not the first time it's spiked like that. Um, But you need to understand why things go up and down in price. But you can fundamentally... Um, if you invested some money in this now and just sat on it, for example, it could go to scroll that screen back up, go back up again. So, for example, it would go to $85 again in the near future. As you can see, there's a little bit of green show in there, which is a bit of recovery. When it's red, it's gone down, and when it's green, it's gone up. I'll keep that, at, I'll keep it simple at the minute because, like this one, you'd call that spinning top. But there's different words for different things. But you can actually look at this and actually see there's a good chance that it's going to head back up to, say, $82, $83.
but you would need to, like I said, you look at it and make your assessment. Here on the bottom here, which I should have covered earlier as well, is the actual trading. This is what people are willing to pay and the amount they're willing to pay. So for example here, that's the, the amount, cost, let's, let's find some out there. So there's 1.44 oh, Bitcoins worth, the volume, what they're willing to pay, 0 0.00857961. And then this is the people selling and this is buying. Now what you've got here, you can see a slight wall being created with very little resistance here. There's a good chance that will push that way and probably level out, probably around here. But like I said, there's not a lot on the sale side. There's a lot on the green, which means the price is very likely to see a price increase rather than a decrease. Now, the other thing that you're looking for in this as well is trading volume, which as you can see is 243.88 volume. One of the important things I will always say is do not trade on anything below 10 Bitcoins a day. You're looking, ideally you're looking for at least 20. And in this case, you've got over 243, which means you've got a lot of buying and selling going on, which helps keep this price moving. Because if it's low, there's a good chance you could buy into this and it could sit there for months if, if there's a low trading volume on it, which does happen with some projects that have low media coverage, low um, responses from the team, etc., and simply waiting for the next major development. It does happen. Neo is quite proactive, which is why it's a good one to look at. And basically, this is where I would say there's a good chance this is going up in price. Not massive because the market's in red anyway, but you can expect to see some movement in there. What else have I not covered? So you know the two graphs now with lines. Now, if you wanted to draw a line, you can actually go on here, click line, which is difficult to do on this because it's actually showing a negative trend when we're actually expecting the, the opposite of that. Um, let's find a, another one that's actually gonna show some positive trends on it. Let's go back. Uh, Ethereum's been showing quite positive signs recently. So let's have a look at Ethereum. Okay, so let's just take it from here. Because it's had a significant price rise, as you can see here. If you took the support line here, you could have followed that roughly up. And then obviously it's tailored off there and should have gone back up but this is part and parcel of looking at the other things within the crypto space um, and analyzing why things are going up and why they're going down because um, the only taking the the graph analysis and putting some lines on there is only part and parcel of, of trading you can see here there's quite a lot of people willing to buy ethereum but at the moment it's going to probably jump to here quite quite easily, um, but ultimately it's not got that much movement right now. You can see it's had that jump there where it's sort of dropped off, but I'm not expecting it to go up to that sort of level today. But I wouldn't be surprised during next week it's back up there, so you can do an evaluation of what that's worth to you. There you can see the old time, the low for the last 24 hours, 763. The high is 806, which is a nice, nice gain on that. Um, but just going over some of these bits and pieces, just so you guys get an idea. These are the trading that's been going on as well. So you can actually see how much trading has been occurring. These are actual the sales. But as you can see here, hoping we'd actually see a little bit of movement going to the right so we can actually see the trading now we go down here we'll cover the order book as well what you've got is the ask price and the bid price so what they're offering here that one's like 0 0.820 3010 these are the ones that are selling these are the guys that are buying so when you see trading, selling, 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 they've been pulled from here 
which means that the price is actually going down, not up. And when it starts all going green, the price is going up because they're taking from this side. Why is that relevant? Because when you're bidding, you put it lower than this price. Otherwise, you just click on it and take it. But I do expect that we're going to see this price go up a little bit. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's just had a bit of positive movement while we're chatting. Um, but there is going to hit a little bit of a wall. And that will probably slow this down again. And that, that's basically the trading it goes up and down, up and down all day long. And if you want to trade on these, you just do the buying and selling here. You can set a limit or a conditional, uh, how much you want to buy, how much you want to pay, and how long you want to enforce it for. Because you could do like a transactions immediate or good till cancelled. Because you may do an immediate one expecting the price to drop. So you may actually want to buy it now for whatever reason, like you're going to bet or whatever. Um, but if you don't take it right now, you may actually say, you know what, if you don't take it, I'll have a look where it is tomorrow, just as an example. Or there's other reasons you would actually do this, but I'm just trying to keep things simple right now. Um, yeah, I know I'm beginning to waffle a bit, so I'll just cut it off there. And that's roughly a few bits and pieces about trading. One of the things I do recommend as well, is understanding the connection between the prices. It's better to work in Bitcoin prices than it is in dollars. The reason is the Bitcoin price can move as much as the dollars. So let's just say Bitcoin was worth $100 this morning. I bought some Ethereum and then I sold the Ethereum. The Ethereum was in profit. But when I sold it, the Bitcoin is actually now worth $200. But when I've traded it back out of Ethereum back to Bitcoin, I may only actually have made $50 because the amount of the Bitcoin value with the dollar compared to the Ethereum, the valuation has changed. So although I've traded in, sold my Bitcoin, bought Ethereum, sold the Ethereum and bought Bitcoin, the reality is that Bitcoin value has changed because they're both obviously linked to the dollar as well. As such, you could end up with having $50, yet your Ethereum's actually gone up in value as well. It's, it's a bit confusing sometimes. I know some people trying to do the trading uh, get confused on that. That's why I say try and keep to the Bitcoin pricing. The other thing I do recommend is when you get some profits, like if you're swing trading or day trading, I'll stop doing that. This mouse. Try not to say bad words. Say like you you gained. Um, say you invested today and you you had you started off with 0.1 Bitcoin, and when you sold later on today, like say it just hit this peak and you sold it and you gained two Bitcoin at uh, 0.2 Bitcoin, I would recommend putting the one the point one back into your wallet for trading to something else and then maybe you want to continue swing trading with the point one that was the profit that way you can invest in something else and invest in this as well so you sort of doubled your money but you've reduced your risk because you've took some out and put it into something else this is why when you look at my portfolio i'm not invested in one i'm invested in about 30 40 different things because the the idea being that some of these are going to fly and some of these are going to fall, fall flat in their face. At the same time, I do day trading as well. So, for example, as you can see here, while we're chatting, we're seeing the Ethereum price going back up. Um, now, if you had bought into this down here, this is the sort of thing you're looking at. And if you take into account the fees and different exchanges have different fees, so please look at those as well. I'm not going to tell you that uh, one exchange is this, one is that. We search the exchanges because they're all different and there's, there's different reasons for different transaction fees. Because uh, some charge, some charge just for the, the one transaction, you know, for example, if you're buying, but others will charge for the buying and selling. Uh, just research it yourself. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into some of the stuff we look at when you're trading. As you can see there, we've just had a bit of retraction on Ethereum now. And as you can see, that's just dropped away on the sell side there. 
and this is basically how you trade. Generally, I'd say if you're trading, I'd recommend expecting to make at least 2% per trade to make it worthwhile. Ideally, you're trying to get above that, and it's nice to get above that, but a lot of the day traders are actually tra trading on even smaller amounts than that, especially if they're using bots, because the, the expectation is they're trying to rise by one to 5% a day, which, which can be quite significantly, um, a, well, sorry, it can be quite a significant amount because some of the guys I trade with have got over $400,000 that they're trading with. So when you say one to 5%, it's like, well, that's not a lot. Well, not in $100, but it is on 400,000. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I'll stop now because I know I'm nattering. Bye. <laughs>